Okay, so if you know all the details and you just want to get your track out, skip over all of the important bits I'm going to tell you. The simplest thing for you to do right now is simply go up to File, roll yourself down to Export, go over to Wave or MP3, choose where you want it to go, hit Save, and press start. However, if you want to know some more details and make sure you get a really great result at the end, let me break that down for you. So first things first, before we export our track, we want to have a look at our master here and we want to make sure that at no point is it exceeding zero. So if we play some of our beat here, if we look at our meter here, we're getting up near zero, but we're definitely not exceeding it or passing it and we're not getting any clipping. We know we're going to be good there and we need to play through our whole track and make sure we're not getting any clipping there. Now, if you're exporting your mix to be mastered, you want to make sure that this level is not really exceeding beyond about 6 dB so that there's headroom there for the mastering process to then happen. But most important thing, if we're getting a track out, we're putting it out as we are, just make sure that we're not exceeding zero on our master. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can make sure it's mixed and balanced really, really well so it doesn't exceed that and you've got your full dynamic for the, you then to work on it later. Or we can put a limiter on there to make sure it doesn't exceed zero. In this case, I've got the Lursa Mastering Console on here and then just Tonal Balance, which I was just using to uh, get a balance of the track. So once we've mixed the whole track and we know we're not exceeding zero and it's ready to bounce, well, we can use commands. We can do Command R and that's going to bring up this here and it's going to give us the option of do we want to do the file format as a WAV or an MP3, for example. I would tend to just leave it on WAV and we can do an MP3 bounce at the same time. Let's then name it and decide where it's going to go. So it's called Splash. It's 133 BPM and this is going to be version 2.1 for the sake of this tutorial. So let's go save and it's got its own folder. Brilliant. So here are now our export settings that we want to look at. First thing is I want to export the whole song. So mode, I want to have it in full song. If we have it in pattern, it would just export one of the selected patterns. In this case, pattern four, which is selected at the top. Definitely not what I want. Now tail leave remainder means when that last bit of music hits and there's a bit of reverb or delay at the end, it's going to render that out as well and leave that tail in. Do cut remainder when sort of the last sample, the last bit of MIDI hits, it's just going to cut straight away, even if there's some kind of trail off. You're better off to leave the remainder and then cut the file down afterwards or do something like put a gate on your master to cut it off automatically. Wrap remainder would be perfect for loops. If you ever put a loop in and you hear something and you hit some of the tail come back in at the start, that's because it's wrapped remainder on the end there. So we are going to have leave remainder. Perfect. Now I've put this on a WAV file and leave it on stereo and then I've got a 24-bit file to then work off. If this is going to be the master, I've got all my mastering plugins, it's the final product of how I want it to be. 24 bit will be fine, but you're using that full dynamic range anyway. There won't be any difference between the two unless you're working on very, very specific uh, quiet music. If you've got incredibly quiet sections and then slightly louder sections, you might benefit slightly more from having that 24 bit dynamic range. Otherwise, 16 bit's gonna be fine for you. It's a stereo track, so we want it to be in stereo. If we select MP3 as well, well, we can now have both highlighted so we can do an MP3 conversion at the same time. I like to keep it in 320 kbps, which is the best quality MP3 available. So we just leave it as that. In here where it says quality, now the term quality is a little bit misleading. What this really refers to in the resampling section is any pitch distorted stretched out samples. For example, you can see this crash just here. If I'd stretched it out to a ridiculous length, the higher this resampling point, the better quality that's going to sound. I leave it on 32 points sync for the most part and that's absolutely fine if you find you're exporting your track and you've done something like a really stretched out sample and it sounds terrible try moving it into the high quality 64 point sync and upwards the higher you go the longer the render time takes but the better the result hq for all plugins it allows each plugin that has the option to enable its oversampling um, and just give the best result it can out of it rather than the playback results. Some synths can vary, for example, where they have a playback option, but their final render option can be a lot nicer, um, taking account for anti-aliasing and things like that. Disable max polyphony, absolutely. You know, if there was ever a restriction of how many things can be playing at once in our final bounce, we don't want that. Dithering, now, 
dithering, we only need to do if there is a reduction in the overall file. If we are exporting this to say a 24 bit file, all of our sessions have been at 44.1K and we're taking that into mastering, we'd leave dithering off. If this is going to be our master and we're not using any dithering in another plugin like Isotopes Ozone, then we're going to do dithering because dithering is going to be a reduction of that file format. If our recordings, for example, in here were in say 88.2 at 24 bit and we're exporting to 16 bit 44.1, we absolutely want to dither in those circumstances. Most of the time I will be using Isotopes Ozone Dither. In this case, I don't have it on here, but if I was exporting this as my master, that's what I would do. I would dither with Ozone. And if I was exporting this to go out and be mastered, there wouldn't be any dithering. I'd be keeping the file format exactly the same. Safe Playlist Markers is completely up to you. It um, can be useful if you do say dance music. It can be read by things like Tractor, really, really good in that kind of respect. Only in the MP3 format will that be embedded though. We can save loop markers as well. Again, useful for that kind of thing. Note markers and save tempo information as well. Split mixer tracks would allow us to get our stems and or multi-tracks depending on what we're looking to do. P, so trim PDC silence. If we've got lots and lots of plugins and there's plugin delay compensation, which is what PDC is, at the start of the track, there might be like a, as much as a second of silence before everything really starts. All that does is it automatically trims that silence away for you. And obviously enable insert effects and enable master effects. So I could do this and it would turn off the Lursa mastering console and that would just be my final export there without any of those in. However, if I switch this on, it will now run through all of those plugins. This means we could have a, a without effects version, with effects version, master effects on and off as we so desire. From there, it's just a case of hitting start and letting it go. But we do also have the option to upload to cloud. And as you can see, we can upload to SoundCloud or we can manage cloud accounts and add them in there. If maybe you wanted to export your track and get it onto the live of Spotify or Apple Music, well, the channel sponsor DistroKid will be able to help you out with that. DistroKid is a digital music distributor, meaning they can get your music onto Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, and all the other platforms at a great price that an independent artist can afford. The distributor that I've been using for the past six to seven years at this point. If you'd like to try them out, you can get a discount of your first year in the link below. So once we've set all of that up, we can just hit start and let our render roll through. And once that's rolled through, that is our export complete. And as we can see there in the folder, we've got our file, we've got our web and we've got our MP3. And we could just drag and drop that in. And there is our final export look. There you go, guys. I hope that's been helpful for you. You now know how to export your music from FL Studio, and I hope you learned a little something about the ways to do it and get the best result. And you also now know how you can get your beats and music onto the likes of Apple Music and Spotify as well, instead of just SoundCloud. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Take care.